What's up, everyone? Thank you for coming back. Thank you for subscribing and commenting and watching my videos. I wanted to do another quick video uh, going over Wilhelm Reich, the father of Oregon Energy. So let's go ahead and get right into this. The controversial Dr. Wilhelm Reich, father of Oregon Energy, also known as Qi or Life Energy and the Science of Organomy, Wilhelm Reich developed a metal line device named the Oregon Accumulator believing that the trapped organ energy that he could harness in groundbreaking approaches toward psychiatry, medicine, the social sciences, biology, and weather research. Discovery of the organ energy. Wilhelm Reich's discovery of organ began with his research of psychobioenergy, basis for Sigmund Freud's theories of neurosis in humans. Wilhelm Reich believed that traumatic experiences block the natural flow of life energy in the body, leading to physical and mental disease. Wilhelm Reich concluded that the libidinal energy that Freud, uh, Freud discussed was the primordial energy of life itself connected to more than just sexuality. Organ was everywhere, and Reich measured this energy in motion over the surface of the earth. He even determined that its motion affected weather formations. The organ accumulator in 1940, Wilhelm Reich constructed the first device to accumulate organ energy, a six-sided box constructed of altering layers of organic materials to attract the energy and metallic materials to radiate the energy towards the center of the box. Patients would sit inside the accumulator and absorb organ energy through their skin and lungs. The accumulator had a healthy effect on the blood and body tissue by improving the flow of life energy by releasing energy blocks. The new cult of sex and anarchy. Not everyone liked their theories, uh, like theories Wilhelm Reich suggested. Wil Wilhelm Reich's work with cancer patients and the organ accumulators received two very negative press articles. Journalist Mil Mildred Brandy wrote both The New Cult of Sex and Anarchy and The Strange Case of Wilhelm Reich. Soon after the publication, the Federal Drug Administration sent Agent Charles Wood to investigate Wilhelm Reich and Reich Research's uh, research center in Organon. So this guy created a device where he could uh, help people uh, with this organ energy. It would give them back their life force energy to help their bodies uh, reconstruct themselves back to normal, back to uh, full health. And somebody didn't like what he was doing. So they wrote, wrote some neg uh, negative publications about him. And then they sent in the government to investigate what was going on. Troubles with the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. In 1954, the FDA issued a complaint about an injection, injunction against Reich, charging that he had violated the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act by delivering misbranded and adulterated devices in interstate commerce and by making false and misleading claims. The FDA called the accumulators a sham and organ energy non-existent. A judge issued an injunction that ordered all accumulators rented or owned by Reich and those working with him destroyed, and all labeling referring to organ energy destroyed. Reich did not appear in person at court proceedings, defending himself by letter. Two years later, uh, William Reich was in jail for contempt of, of injunction a conviction based on the actions of an associate who did not obey the injunction and still possess an accumulator. So the FDA had a problem with him um, making these devices which uh, was harnessing the organ energy and helping people. On November 3rd, 1957, William Reich died in his jail cell of heart failure. In his last will and testament, William Reich ordered that Works be sealed for fifty years in hopes that he would someday be a, uh, someday be a better place to accept his wondrous machines. So once again, we have somebody helping people for a better cause, and they somehow end up in jail, and somehow end up dying when all they were doing was trying to help people. FBI opinion: FBI has a whole section on their website dedicated to William Reich. This is what they had to say. A German immigrant described himself as the associate professor of medical psychology, 
director of the Oregon Institute, president and research physician of William Reich's Foundation, and discoverer of biological or uh, life energy. Second. In 1940, security investigation was begun to determine the extent of Reich's communist comments. Commitments. In 1947, a security investigation concluded that neither the Oregon Project nor any of its staff were engaged in subverse activities or were in violation of any statute within the jurisdiction of FBI. In 1954, the U.S. Attorney Journey filed a complaint seeking permanent injunction to prevent interstate sh uh, shipment of devices and literature distributed by Dr. Reich's group. That same year, Dr. Reich was arrested for contempt of court for violation of attorney uh, general's injunction. So here's one of the devices that he had made. William Reich. He also had a, a device that was called the Cloud Busters which pretty much made it uh, mess with the energy to make it rain, pretty much. And what the device looked like right here. Um, so Reich uh, failed to appear on roll on November 1957, November 3rd, and he was found at 7 a.m. in his bed, fully closed, but for clothes, but with shoes. Prison doctor said he had died during the night of mitochondrial insufficiency with sudden health failure he was buried in a vault at organon that he had asked his caretaker to dig in 1955 he had left instruction that there were to be no religious ceremony but that they would record should be played of uh, a record that should be played of sherbert's ave maria and that the grand grand night headstone should read simply wilhelm reich born March 24th, 1897. So they pretty much came in and they seized all this dude's equipment. They burned all his books. Um, and it looks like anybody who had a device also, the device was taken and they destroyed uh, what he, they destroyed all his paperwork, all his books. On June 5th, 1956, two FDA Officials arrived at Oregonon to supervise the destruction of the accumulators. Most of them had been sold by that time, and another 50 were with the Silvert in New York. Only three were at Oregonon. The FDA agents were not allowed to destroy them, only to supervise the destruction. So Reich's friends and his son Peter chopped them up with axes as uh, the agents watched. Once they were destroyed, Reich was placed in an American flag on top of them. On June 26th, June, uh, the agents returned to supervise the destruction of the promotional materials, including 251 copies of his book, The American Civil Liberties Union. Issued a, oh, the, well, the issued, they issued a press release criticizing the book Burning, although coverage of the release was poor, and Reich ended up asking them not to help because he was annoyed that they had uh, failed to criticize the destruction of the accumulators. In England, A.S. Neal and the poet Herbert Reed signed a letter of protest, but it was never published. On the 23rd July, the remaining accumulators in New York were destroyed. S.A. Collins and Sons, who, built, who had built them. On uh, 23rd of August, six tons of Reich's books, journals, and papers were born in New burned in New York. In a scenario, a public on the 25th Street materials included copies of several books, including The Sexual Revolution, Characters Analysts, and The Mass Psychology of Fascism. Although, although these had been published in German before Reich has uh, ever discovered Oregon, he had, he had added mention of it in his English edition, so they were caught by the injunction. It had been cited as one of the worst examples of censorship in U.S. history. As with the accumulators, the FDA was supposed only to observe the destruction. The psychiatrist Victor Sobey, an associate of rights, wrote, All the expenses and labor 
had to be provided by the Oregon Institute Press. A huge truck with three to help was hired. I felt like people who, when they were, are to be executed, are made to dig their own graves first, and then shot, and then thrown in it. We carried box after box of the literature. There goes William Reich right here. A cloudbuster device designed by William Reich, which Reich claimed produced rain by manipulating what he called organ energy present in the atmosphere. Uh, no pre peer reviewed scientific evidence exists to support either the effectiveness of the device or the existence of a hypothesized organ energy. The cloudbuster was intended to be used in a similar way to a lighting rod focusing on a location in the sky and grounding it into some material that was presumed to absorb organ, such as a body of water would draw the organ energy out of the atmosphere, causing the formations of cloud and rain. Wright concluded dozens of, of experiments with the cloudbuster, calling the research cosmic organ engineering. So this organ energy is also known to counteract 5G energy. So these are the organs, uh, organ pyramids. Just make sure if you're getting one, you're getting a good one. So these supposedly counteract 5G energy and people bury them under cell phone towers to counteract the energy, the negative energy, into positive energy. Um, so that's William Reich. I'm going to play a short video about him. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please comment, like, and subscribe below. Uh, until next time, guys, I'll see you guys later. One of the most important parts of Reich's story that has never been taken seriously is his laboratory science. And I think it's pretty clear that a very large amount of the barriers are not necessarily scientific. Up in the lab, that's where we did our experimental work. And I was amazed by some of the stuff I was seeing. The most important thing about Reich, in my opinion, was that he was a revolutionary physician. From the very beginning, Reich thought that there was only one basic drive. The apex of sexuality, it's the orgasm. Reich went there as a very, as a first. In 1927, he dedicated his book on the orgasm to his beloved teacher, Freud. The term sexual politics basically originated with Reich. He's also a pioneer of body therapy. And Reich was the first person to introduce breathing into psychoanalytic therapy. Nobody talks about breathing the way Reich talks about breathing. Under the Nazis, no other psychoanalyst's books and writings were banned to the extent that Reich's were. Wilhelm Reich took a clear stand against fascism and his name was on the Gestapo list. That he undertook such a radical position and paid for it at such great personal sacrifice has made him a role model for me to this day. There was a lot of gossip about Reich. He was thought of as kind of a quack. Everybody was afraid of him in town. They would call him a communist, they would call him a Nazi. One of the things I remember hearing as a child was that he had a, um, a machine gun on the roof. One gentleman asked me, actually asked me this. He said, is it true that when you work with the mice, you have to take off all your clothes and wear this sheer white uniform? You know, I had made the prediction that if Reich goes to jail, he'll die there. I said, it'll be like putting an eagle in a cage. Wilhelm Reich and my parents did not think that he would lose that trial. 
When I tell people that his books were burned, they said, where, in Europe? I said, no, in the United States. As late as 1960, they were still after these books. I do remember them coming to burn the, the books. All these books were just thrown into the trough, and then this thing came down and grabbed them and threw them into the fire. He was clearly a brilliant person who could see many things that other people just were unaware of. It would be very good to deconstruct what we think we know about Wilm Reich and start all over again and ask the simple questions, who was he? What was he really on to? If what Reich did was important, it's not just because he was a therapist and a really good one. He believed he had made some of the most important scientific contributions of the 20th century. The biggest mistake that the false narratives in the past have made is to dismiss the science out of hand. For those of you not familiar with Reich, he was a renowned psychiatrist and psychoanalyst in Austria and Germany. One of the youngest and most promising students of Sigmund Freud. An outspoken anti-fascist, Reich had to flee from Germany when Hitler came to power. His writings banned by the Nazis and the communists. And as a research physician and scientist, he used high magnification microscopes and time-lapse filming to study energy functions in living matter, during which he discovered new microorganisms that revealed crucial links to the origin of cancer cells. He also discovered a biological radiation surrounding some of these microorganisms, a radiation that he later discovered also existed in the atmosphere. Wright called this radiation orgone energy, and for nearly two decades, he investigated its properties and practical uses. This included using modified Faraday cages called orgone energy accumulators for the experimental treatment of patients with terminal cancer and other diseases. And developing instrumentation for weather research and experimentation. Reich's persistent efforts to bring his work to the attention of scientists and physicians were met with dismissal and slander. And in 1947, this magazine article accused Reich of promoting these modified Faraday cages, these orgone accumulators, as a cancer cure and for increasing sexual potency, claims that Reich himself never made. Nevertheless, this article launched a seven-year effort by the Food and Drug Administration with the cooperation of the American Medical, Psychiatric, and Psychoanalytic Associations to discredit and stop Reich's work culminating in a federal injunction ordering Reich's publications to be banned from interstate commerce and destroyed. Reich was imprisoned for violating this injunction, where he died in 1957. And since then, the falsehoods and outright slanders about Reich's life and work have been repeated and amplified in countless articles, books, films, and websites, including Wikipedia, creating today's distorted narratives. Starting in 1961, all 10 books which were banned and burned were brought back into print by New York publisher Roger Strauss, plus 13 additional titles. And all of Reich's research journals which were banned and burned have been reprinted by the Wilhelm Reich Museum. Wilhelm Reich, a prominent Austrian physician and psychoanalyst, discovered a powerful new physical energy and for the next two decades devoted his life to the investigation of its laws and properties. He confirmed the existence of this energy in the human body, verified its presence in the atmosphere, developed instrumentation to observe and collect it, and harnessed it for a variety of purposes, from cancer treatment to motor power, to weather experimentation. Reich called his discovery orgone energy. But tragically, it was a discovery that the world was not ready for.
Wilhelm Reich was born in 1897 in Galicia, the easternmost part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, now the Ukraine. He grew up in Bukovina on a large farm operated by his father. Until he was 13 years old, Reich was educated at home by tutors. His mother, to whom he was devoted, committed suicide in 1910 after his father discovered she had had a brief affair with one of the tutors. His father died four years later from tuberculosis. That same year, 1914, the First World War broke out. Within days, Russian troops swept through Bukovina. Reich narrowly escaped being sent to Russia as a hostage and had to flee his home. Later he wrote, I never saw either my homeland or my possessions again. Of a well-to-do past, nothing was left. For the next four years, Reich served in the Austrian army, experiencing what he called the war as a machine. In 1918, the war finally ended. Germany and Austria were defeated. The Austro-Hungarian Empire was broken up and Bukovina became a part of Romania. Alone, homeless, and intellectually starved after four years of war, Reich entered the medical school at the University of Vienna. recognition of the significance of sexuality drew him to the work of Dr. Sigmund Freud, the father of psychoanalysis. Soon he was considered one of Freud's most promising students. Freud had discovered that neuroses are caused by the conflict between natural sexual instincts and the social denial and frustration of those instincts. Freud had also hypothesized the existence of a biological sexual energy in the body he called it libido and described it as something which is capable of increase, decrease, displacement and discharge and which extends itself over the memory traces of an idea like an electric charge over the surface of the body. But as the years passed, Freud and his followers diluted much of this concept, reducing the libido to little more than a psychological energy or idea. By 1925, Freud had concluded that the libido theory may therefore, for the present, be pursued only by the path of speculation. Reich's clinical observations, however, demonstrated that sexual energy was more than just an idea, and that sexual satisfaction, in fact, alleviated neurotic symptoms. He discovered that the function of the orgasm is to maintain an energy equilibrium, by discharging excess biological energy that builds up naturally in the body. If that discharge function is disturbed, as it proved to be in all his patients, this energy continues to build up without adequate release, stagnating and fueling neurotic disorders. Reich's orgasm theory set him apart from his colleagues because it indicated that the libido was a real physical energy that possibly might be measured quantitatively. His clinical work also led to new therapeutic techniques designed to discover and eliminate any impediments to the flow and discharge of this energy. But the widespread existence of human misery forced Reich to conclude that the solution to the problem of neuroses was not treatment, it was prevention. You have to revamp your whole way of thinking, said Reich, so that you don't think from the standpoint of the state and the culture but from the standpoint of what people need and what they suffer from. Then you arrange your social institutions accordingly. Freud, on the other hand, maintained that culture takes precedence, that sexual instincts must be adapted to the existing social structure. These conflicting positions led to an eventual break between Reich and Freud. In Vienna and later in Berlin, Reich devoted much of his time and money 
educating working class people about the essential role of sexuality in their lives. I had six clinics in Vienna, said Reich, where people came and received advice once or twice a week. To provide medical and educational help was its purpose. To reach the greatest number of people, he worked within the socialist and communist parties to promote sex education, birth control, divorce rights, and better housing. Reich recalled that in Berlin, there were about 50,000 people in my organization in the first year. Reich was also very outspoken about Germany's turbulent political climate. Unlike most members of the Berlin Psychoanalytic Association, Reich openly opposed the rise of the Nazi party. But his activities exacted a high price. He was denounced by the communists and expelled from the International Psychoanalytic Association, calling these events catastrophes which threaten my personal, professional, and social existence. When asked what he would do, Reich replied, just go on. University of Oslo, 1935. While continuing to teach and develop his innovative therapeutic techniques, Reich began a series of laboratory experiments to verify the existence of a physical, biological energy expressed in the emotions. Using human subjects, Reich was able to demonstrate a charge at the skin surface directly related to feelings of pleasure or anxiety. The charge would increase when a subject experienced pleasure and decrease during feelings of unpleasure. From this, Reich concluded that pleasure is the movement of biological energy toward the periphery of the organism, while anxiety is the movement of this energy toward the center. He assumed this energy to be electrical, but was it? and did similar energy processes exist in more basic life forms. Reich discovered that under certain conditions, sterilized and unsterilized substances, such as grass, blood, sand, charcoal, and foodstuffs, disintegrate into pulsating vesicles that exhibit a bluish color. He called these vesicles bions. Reich observed internal motility in the bions, an effect of energy. He also found that certain bions revealed a strong radiation phenomenon seen here as a white field around the organism and that these bions could kill bacteria and cancer cells. This radiation confirmed the existence of an energy that did not obey any known laws of electricity or magnetism. Reich called this energy orgone because its discovery had evolved from his investigation of the orgasm function and because this energy could charge organic matter. When he published his findings, the scientific and psychiatric communities responded with a vicious year-long attack in the Norwegian press. In the wake of this response and the inevitability of a Second World War, Reich began to look to America as the future home for his work. In August 1939, Reich sailed for America on the last ship to leave Norway before World War II broke out. Reich settled in the Forest Hill section of New York City. He taught at the New School for Social Research in Manhattan.
published his books in English. Trained American physicians in his therapeutic techniques and pursued his investigations of orgone energy. Since the energy appeared to be everywhere and to permeate all substances, Reich had to find ways to isolate and collect it in order to study its functions and make it usable. Experiments demonstrated that organic or non-metallic materials, such as cotton, wool, or plastic, attract, absorb, and hold the energy. Metallic materials, steel or iron, attract the energy and quickly reflect it in both directions. On the basis of these experiments, Reich constructed small boxes with alternating layers of organic and metallic materials, with the inner walls lined with metal. The organic layers attract the atmospheric orgone energy, which is then directed inward by the metal layers. Any energy reflected outward by the metal layers is reabsorbed by the organic material, attracted back to the metal and directed toward the inside of the box. The result? A higher concentration of orgone energy inside the box. The more layers, the higher the concentration. This accumulation of energy can be verified in a variety of ways. For example, a constant temperature difference exists between the air above the box and in the surrounding air, contradicting the second law of thermodynamics. There also exists a slower electroscopic discharge rate in the higher orgone concentration within the box. These layered boxes known as orgone energy accumulators, became a valuable tool in Reich's scientific and medical research. Initially, they were used to observe visual manifestations of orgone energy within the enclosure and to test the effects of orgone radiation on cancer mice. Because his results with cancer mice were so promising, Reich decided to test the effects of orgone radiation on human subjects. He constructed orgone energy accumulators that were large enough for a person to sit in, and in 1942, he began experimental treatments with cancer patients. They were all terminal cases. Wright promised no cure and charged no money. Over a period of time, the patients showed marked improvement, relief of pain, healthier blood condition, weight gain, and the shrinkage and elimination of tumors. Despite these positive results, the patients died, reinforcing Reich's conviction that cancer is a bioenergetic shrinking following emotional resignation, and that the tumors themselves are not the disease, but merely a local manifestation of a deeper systemic disorder. Once again, Reich's focus became prevention. Reich also discovered that water and high humidity absorb and hold orgone energy, making it difficult to carry out experimental work in New York City during the summer. In 1940, on a camping trip to New England, Reich discovered the Rangeley Lakes region in Maine. With its low humidity and clean air, it provided an ideal environment for his work. In 1942, Reich purchased an old farm bordering on a small lake. He called it Organon and envisioned it as a permanent home for the various branches of his work. In 1945, a student's laboratory was built. Three years later, construction began on an Orgone Energy Observatory, which included additional laboratory facilities, Reich's study and library, and outdoor observation decks. Funding for these buildings and for Reich's research came exclusively from his own income as a physician and teacher and from loans and contributions by students. By 1947, 
After less than eight years in America, Reich's work was attracting considerable interest as orgon research expanded into new areas of psychiatry, medicine, and biophysics. One of Reich's most significant new developments was the discovery of a motor force in orgone energy that had enormous practical implications. Here, Reich demonstrates a small motor being propelled by orgone energy from the body. And here, motor power is provided by orgone energy harnessed from the atmosphere. With the development of Organon, Reich's dream of a home for his work was slowly becoming a reality. Sadly, it was a dream that he would not see fulfilled. In 1947, this article written by freelance journalist Mildred Brady appeared in New Republic magazine. It was filled with distortions and innuendos about Reich's sexual theories and orgone research. Brady's most inflammatory claim was that Reich was building accumulators of orgone energy which are rented out to patients who presumably derive orgastic potency from it. Implying that Reich was a danger to the public Brady challenged the medical authorities to take action against him. Two months later, the article was brought to the attention of the Federal Food and Drug Administration. The result was a 10-year campaign by the FDA designed to destroy Reich's work. The FDA focused on the orgone energy accumulator, which Reich and other physicians were using experimentally with patients. Convinced that the accumulator was being fraudulently promoted as a sexual and medical device, FDA agents spent years interviewing Reich's associates, physicians, students, and patients looking for dissatisfied accumulator users. None were ever found. As the FDA attack continued, so did Reich's work. He continued to develop new ways to visualize, measure, and harness orgone energy from the atmosphere. The Cloudbuster, for example, was an experimental instrument that could affect weather patterns by altering concentrations of orgone energy in the atmosphere. A set of hollow metal pipes and cables inserted into water creates a stronger orgone energy system than that in the surrounding atmosphere. Water, which strongly attracts and absorbs orgone, draws the atmospheric energy through the pipes. This movement of orgone from a lower to a higher energy system was used by Reich to create clouds and to dissipate them. In 1953, during a long drought that threatened the main blueberry crop, several farmers offered to pay Reich if he could bring rain to the parched region. The Weather Bureau had forecast no rain for several days when Reich began his cloud-busting operations. Ten hours later, a light rain began to fall. Over the next few days, close to two inches fell. The blueberry crop was saved. In February 1954, the FDA filed a complaint for injunction against Reich in the federal court in Portland, Maine. The complaint declared that orgone energy does not exist. It asked the court to prohibit the shipment of accumulators in interstate commerce and to ban Reich's published literature, which they claim was labeling for the accumulators. Reich responded to the complaint with a lengthy letter to Judge John Clifford, explaining that he could not appear in court since doing so would allow a court of law to judge basic scientific research. 
scientific matters, he wrote, can only be clarified by prolonged, faithful, bona fide observations in friendly exchange of opinion, never by litigation. I therefore submit, in the name of truth and justice, that I shall not appear in court. Judge Clifford did not accept Reich's letter as a valid legal response, and the injunction was issued on default as if Reich had never responded at all. But the injunction was even more excessive than the initial complaint. It ordered that all Oregon energy accumulators and their parts were to be destroyed. It ordered all materials containing instructions for the use of the accumulator to be destroyed as well. It also banned a list of Reich's books containing statements about Oregon Energy until such time as all references to Oregon Energy were deleted. After the initial shock, Reich continued his work, traveling to Arizona to experiment with the Cloudbuster in the dry desert environment. While he was there, and without his knowledge, one of Reich's students, Dr. Michael Silvert, moved a truckload of accumulators and books from Rangeley, Maine to New York City, a direct violation of the injunction. As a result, the FDA charged Reich and Silvert with criminal contempt of court. In 1956, both men were found guilty. Reich was sentenced to two years in a federal prison. While Reich appealed his sentence, the government carried out the destruction of accumulators and literature. In New York City, several tons of Reich's books and other publications were burned in one of the city's garbage incinerators, including titles that were only to have been banned. This destruction of literature constitutes one of the most heinous acts of censorship in United States history. All appeals denied on March 11, 1957, two weeks shy of his 60th birthday, Wilhelm Reich was imprisoned at the Federal Penitentiary in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. He died there of heart failure eight months later, on November 3, 1957, and was buried at Organon. of the history of natural science, it always happened that profound or true thoughts or true facts were always either distorted or flattened out. The danger, especially of distortion, is particularly great in the case of organomy. It must be scientific, it cannot be political in these matters. And I personally declare that I will be the first to fight with all my strengths, with whatever I've got, against such a distortion of our principles. <laughs>